So you're, if you're out there and you know anybody, somebody, oh, brother, God. sister, cousin, cat, dog, friend, parakeet, or if you're one of the millions and it's millions of millions. people out there thinking about, contemplating, maybe even possibly pondering over the idea of growing indoors as some type of hydroponic system, you've got to watch this video. And not only watch it, you have to watch it all the way through the end. I'm telling you, if you don't, you're going to regret it. I was given this pretty cool A-Hope uh, indoor hydroponics gardening system. And I really enjoyed it. So far, it's really been a treat being able to grow indoors. Also, you know, I really enjoy using it to make my germination easier by starting my seeds indoors. However, as things would start growing, I noticed that um, things weren't growing as good as they were in the first. And I noticed I've been having a lot of issues getting things to germinate. So I had to kind of do a little bit of troubleshooting and kind of determine and figure out uh, what went wrong with my AHO gardener. Basically, I came up with this everything you need to know that no one told you about your indoor hydroponic gardening system. Now, specifically, we're talking about AHO, but this really applies to just about 80% of your indoor hydroponic um, growing systems out there. So, first thing, like I said, I started growing and my tomatoes were growing good and my lettuce was growing great and just everything was looking really wonderful. And then slowly but surely as I started growing, growing more, I started noticing more and more algae. First, it really wasn't that big of a deal, but as time progressed on, it became more and more of an issue. So I took it apart, started cleaning it out, put fresh water in it. And it helped for a little while, but the algae kept coming back. And then I noticed that some of my uh, seedlings, A, either wouldn't germinate or would germinate and get halfway and then they would die or kind of rot out of the stem. The first thing that I didn't notice that I now notice is that most of these gardening systems usually have some kind of filter. And on the A-hole, if you pop open the little um, pump housing at the bottom and pop it open, there is a little filter inside of it. It's kind of hard to see, but you just pry it open. And my filter was horrible, man. It was filthy. So you can clean the filters. I just end up buying a pack of filters for like $6 from Amazon and just kind of cut them to fit. Uh, and then, you know, once I put the filter in, I cleaned it out again really good, wiped out the uh, all the algae and fungus. You can use a little bit of pine saw just to kind of wipe out and make sure it's disinfected. Then I filled it back up with water. Now, one of the things I like to do um, is use a little bit of 50-50 deleted hydroperoxide and just put a teaspoon of it, sometimes even half a teaspoon, into the system just to kind of help, you know, um, keep algae from forming. You don't want to put too much because you'll kill the good bacteria, but you want to put just enough to kind of kill some of the bad bacteria. After doing this, I noticed that, you know, the algae slowed down and things started growing really good again. So definitely you want to look at, you know, not only just changing your water and cleaning your tank, but making sure your filter is cleaned out. Another thing that, you know, I noticed and the A-Hope didn't have them, but I think the Aero Garden has some of these. There's these little stickers with holes in them. And those really are helpful because they help to block out some of the light around these sponges because these sponges will kind of get um, algae. What I ended up doing, I ended up ordering some of these little stickers and labels off of Amazon. You just place them over your little medium basket. And essentially, like I said, it helps to block out the light so that you reduce the amount of algae that your sponges will get. And if you don't want to buy the stickers and constantly keep buying the stickers, what you can do is just get some aluminum foil or aluminum tape or really any tape and just kind of cut a hole or poke a hole in it. Um, big enough to where when your ceiling will sprout, it has enough room to go through the middle, but it also keeps it kind of upright and from leaning over. There's another issue that I had was that the plant was leaning over and the stem was touching the sponge. And some of the plants don't like the stem to touch the sponge and they will rot out. And I had beautiful plants that would just, you know, get tall and then die because that stem was touching that sponge. And so another thing to take in consideration is that if you're going to use your indoor gardening, hydroponic system for either just indoor growing to make it like a kitchen garden or a tabletop garden or if you want to actually just use it to germinate and start plants and this is kind of very important to kind of decide what you want to use it for because if you do decide to use it for a kitchen garden one of the issues that you're going to have is that the roots will get long and they will get tangled up and they will start clogging up your pump 
So if you are going to use it as an indoor kitchen garden, you're going to have to periodically, maybe once a week, maybe more, trim the roots back uh, so that the roots don't clog up your pump. Another thing you also have to do is harvest the leaves more frequently so that they don't grow to the point to where they're touching the light because most of these systems do have a limit on how high the light can go up. And so you'll have to keep pruning and harvesting to keep it, you know, within a reasonable um, amount of you know height. In addition to that, you're going to also have to consider if you have like a six or eight or a 12 pot system, if you have 12 plants in there and they're all full, you know, growing big and tall like they should, they're going to start overcrowding each other. And one's going to be probably blocking the light from the other. So you may want to kind of thin it out. If you got 12 pod system, maybe only use six pods. Those are some things to consider if you do plan on using it as an indoor kitchen garden. Now, if you plan on using it like me, where I just start my seeds and then I transplant them, that's not that big of a deal. However, one of the things that I like to do when I transplant them, I like to cut the sponge, kind of slit it on all four sides a little bit, uh, just to kind of allow for roots to kind of breathe easier when and when I transplant it, as well as I like to use a little bit of rooting hormone just to kind of help it make that initial transition. Also, because I am planning on using it as a transplanter, I generally like to poke holes at the bottom or just maybe snip off a little bit at the bottom of my sponge just to give the roots a little easier time to go all the way down through the sponge and into the soil. So, you know, some things that I like to do to kind of help make that process easier. Now, if you find yourself running out of sponges, of course, you can always buy more sponges. And they're, you know, fairly reasonably inexpensive. But I have experimented with rock wool and it works just as well. Kind of ball it up and kind of form it to the basket. I've also, believe it or not, used cotton balls, 100% pure uh, medical grade cotton. The cotton balls seem to work really well. Uh, you just have to make sure you cover the top because they are prone to get fungus a little bit easier than the foam and the rock wool. So, But those are options that you can use. And I'm pretty sure there are other options, but those are just some things that I've used when I ran out of my growing medium. Now, another issue, not really an issue, just a, more of a convenience factor I've had is that I'll start growing stuff and I'll completely forget what I label. And I tried using the stickers and also just regular plain tape sticker la labels. And over time, they use almost always so ink washes off. So two ways you can rectify that. You can use like a paint marker or a really good, you know, permanent Sharpie with the red writing on it. Or you could use foil tape or foil labels, if you want to spend the money and buy them, or just use foil tape and write on it with a pen. And when you write on foil, it leaves an indention. So it's almost like an identification tag. And even if the ink wears off, uh, you can actually see through the foil, the impression, and kind of like it's embossed. Those are just some more tricks of the trades. Now I want to point out is about the humidity dome. Now the humidity domes are great for a seed germination to kind of keep the warmth and the humidity in however i have found after two to three days if you don't get your seed to start opening up and germinating i would take the humidity dome off because you can increase the ability for it to have fungus and getting mildew or mold in those sponges so three days if it's not opening up i just take the domes off and just you know let it do what it do now on some of the thicker seeds that you can soak in warm water again snip the ends and that will help speed up the germination process as well I've even seen some people, um, shout out to growing out the box, they actually, after they soak down in water, they soak it in chamomile tea because the tannins in chamomile tea is supposed to actually help loosen the skin up and make germination easier for the seed per se. So just some real practical things that I wish someone would have told me when I first got my indoor gardener. And so now I'm telling you so that you can kind of learn from, you know, my mistakes or whatnot. Now, if you're interested in this a-hole gardener that I have, I will drop a link uh, in my um, description and in my comments. And you can go through there and you can get you one of these systems. They're pretty cool. They also have some bigger systems. But I've, you know, I had great luck with the a-hole gardener and it's really great. I've been pondering and maybe you can comment below of making, doing a DIY of a couple of my um, DIY homemade gardening, uh, hydroponic gardening systems. So if you think there's something you'd be interested in, Drop a line below and I will do a video and I'll link it in the comments when I finish the video. Because remember, indoor gardening don't got to be complicated or expensive. Just get out and grow something.